tool that uses video technology to analyze body language, how many words per minute you use, and what you sound like, your motivation, your energy. And we grab that data to train your inside sales reps and to hire new people with that data and to ramp faster, uh, help your new employees ramp faster. So in a nutshell, that's what we do at HireVue. But honestly, I'm here because of Ken Krogh. I remember that uh, not long ago, I wanted to test a lot of these strategies. I wanted to learn how to conquer social selling. I've heard about it, this is, this is about two years ago. I've heard about it, what people were doing, and it was a big buzz two years ago or three years ago, but I had never had the chance to test all these strategies and all these thoughts that I had in my mind. So I went to Ken, I'm like, Ken, I think I can crack the code and I think I could, we can increase revenue if only you let me test some of these tactics and strategies with our inside sales reps at InsideSales.com. And lo and behold, Ken said, you know what? I love testing. I love leads. So let's go at it. So with a lot of testing and uh, perfection and, and making mistakes and, you know, getting a lot of wins and successes, I kind of made this, you say, roadmap or this equation, not just to like get likes and not just to get engagement and reach, because that stuff is fun. But that's just the fluff, right? At the end of the day, you're either increasing revenue or decreasing cost. If social media is not helping you do those two things, then you might as well fire the person who's running your social media. Because the likes really don't really matter that much. They might help you increase and, uh, the judgment and your thought leadership, but it's all about leads and it's all about decreasing cost or increasing revenue. Okay? Uh, where's the clicker here? I think it's... So I'm not going to show you what to do. I'm going to show you how to do it. So take good notes. Uh, I'm going to share a lot of secret sauce. That's what, another thing Ken taught me. Just don't tell people what to do. Just straight up give them the secret sauce. And I'm like, Ken, how am I going to give away my secrets? You know, that, that's something that I've built for this whole time. He's like, dude, that's just how it is. The more you give, the more you receive. So I'm a firm believer that, in that. Okay? So real quick, the agenda. We're going to be covering uh, what we do at HireVue currently and how over the past six months I've increased followerships, blog subscribers, and fans 10,000 times more, okay? We're going to cover also uh, LinkedIn's best practices. So what, how can you utilize LinkedIn, specifically in your own personal brand, and how to increase lead count, how to increase followers, as well as thought leadership. Twitter's best practices, and at the very end, my top four social selling tools that are killing it in the market right now, okay? So real quick. There's so many social media networks out there, right? So where do you put your emphasis in? Well, we sell to B2B customers. We're a B2B SaaS company. Right now, our current LinkedIn strategy is following. It's a B2B, we do social listening, we track who's talking about what, okay? And we use it for branding to show people who we are, that we're a real company, there's humans behind the logo, okay? And we use it for lead gen as well. Then we have Twitter, pretty similar as LinkedIn. We use Google Plus strictly for social SEO. If you give Google love, they're gonna love you back. Because what do you use when you're lost? Google Maps. What do you use to watch a video? YouTube. What do you use um, when you wanna search for something? Google. So at the end of the day, Google has all the data. If you play Google's game, which is Google Plus on social, they will rank you very, very high. And it's free, right? All of us use Gmail. Who, who in this room doesn't have a Gmail? Raise your hand. Exactly. So they own your data. There's no such thing as privacy anymore, right? We all care about privacy and this and that. Realistically, Google owns everything. So if you give them the data that they want and you play their game on Google+, Plus, even though it's a big wasteland, like all of us have a Google Plus account. But none of us really do anything because we're forced to be on there. But if you specifically start posting, okay, certain keywords and certain hashtags, it's gonna work ma magic. YouTube, it's good to have, again, a social media presence good for social SEO. Um, Facebook, we show our company culture that we're cool, uh, we're chill, we're a bunch of millennials and we, we're young and hip, etc. and use it for branding, as well as Instagram, um, believe it or not, and company culture as well. So again, I want to focus on the two most B2B revenue-driven channels, and that is LinkedIn and Twitter. And I'm going to show a few, a few tips on those. By the way, if you want to uh, tweet questions, it's at Gabe via Mazar. It's not Villa Miser. Just throwing it out there. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, here we go. 
Tip number one, complete your profile. It is super simple to do this, but for some reason, we're just lazy. And we just think just because you opened a LinkedIn account, that's all I had to do. Well, you're wrong, or most of us are wrong. You know, this is one of my pet peeves. When somebody opens a LinkedIn account, and next thing you know, there's no profile picture. Next thing you know, they haven't customized their LinkedIn URL. By default, LinkedIn gives you this random URL. This can be customizable through LinkedIn. Okay? I mean, this guy has no keywords in here, and there's no, it's just, he just opened it probably because he was forced to, or he knew he had to be there, and he abandoned it. Don't do this, and I'm going to show you how to not do this. Step number one, my name is Gabriel Villamizar. Nobody calls me Gabriel. So you want to name yourself or go by it by the name that everybody knows you as, if it's adequate and if it's professional. Um, so a good friend of mine uh, would always go by Mike. And his LinkedIn was Michael. But then I'm like, well, so when recruiters or prospects or anybody looks for you, do they type Michael or do they type Mike? Or they know me as Mike. Well, then you should probably name yourself Mike because that's what people know you as. That's what people are going to type on Google and LinkedIn. So after that, I changed my name to Gabe, and I'm Gabe in every single platform that I have online. Okay? Number two, optimize your social title, meaning your LinkedIn title. Okay? Don't optimize for a recruiter. Optimize for your prospect. What is your prospect thinking about? What are their pain points? Okay? What are the words that they use on a daily basis to search on Google when they want a solution. Okay? So in this case, number two, I want to rank for social media. I want to rank for social media marketing manager. I want to rank for when people type social audience development. And I also want to rank when people type social selling. And then obviously HireVue because I work at HireVue and we're spending thousands of dollars on paid ads on HireVue and also pushing a lot of organic at social SEO. So the more people that have the word HireVue and all of our employees LinkedIn, the higher social SEO it's going to give all of us. So we all help each other and we all work together. So number one, optimize your name. Number two, optimize your title. Not just for your rec recruiters, because LinkedIn, like Jill Rowley says, is not just for recruiters, right? And not just to be found, but optimize it for your buyer. Number three, believe it or not, if you click on contact info, this expands right here, where it says edit contact info, then fill, it, fill out as much as you can. This, just, this is just like your billboard, right? Your billboard on LinkedIn. Number three, put the address. Because believe it or not, again, Google Maps knows where your company is located. If you communicate to Google Maps, to your LinkedIn profile saying, I work at this company and this company works at this company, therefore you connected the dots. And you're doing Google a favor to identify Gabe Villamizar works at HireVue. Therefore, HireVue is uh, on Google Maps is, has this address. Okay. Make sure you put the email that you want to be, uh, if you're getting a lot of spam, it's probably because sometimes you have your personal email that you log in here, and that's the one you're displaying. Make sure that's your work email, okay? Change that to your work email as well. And uh, number four, make sure you put your Twitter profile. You have your Twitter profile and you have your LinkedIn profile. How do you communicate them with each other? Well, through backlinks and through hyperlinks. So therefore, I'm telling LinkedIn, LinkedIn, this is my Twitter account, and it's going to link to this landing page, which is my Twitter account. On my Twitter account, in my bio, I'm going to put link Twitter, this is, as if I was talking to Twitter, here is my LinkedIn account. And I have a link that redirects back to LinkedIn. Again, they're communicating with each other. It's just back linking strategy works wonders. Therefore, you're going to rank higher than anybody who else is trying to rank the same name as you. So if you're Mike Jones, there's a bajillion Mike Jones, right? But if you communicate all these platforms that you have, then you're going to rank higher for your specific name. Uh, and your websites. I usually, uh, as a rule of thumb, I do three things on websites. Number one, uh, do your company website. Here where it says website. Number two, put your company blog. If your content people are doing it right, they're doing lots of keyword research, a lot of social SEO, and a lot of strategy to rank for certain keywords. Well, optimize and put your company blog. And number three, if you have a personal website or a Google Plus account. That's what I put right there. Okay? Number five is your summary. Optimize your summary. What that is, it's, my, even though mine's a pretty short paragraph, believe it or not, it took me about an hour and a half to construct this paragraph. If you feel like to do the, the same, 
copy and paste my paragraph and just fill in the blanks with information that re is related to you. That's what I teach our inside sales reps. So for example, if you're Mike Jones, say, Mike Jones has blank years of related work experience in blank, 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 you know? That's gonna make your life easier or just come up with your own paragraph. My point is, again, optimize to your buyer. So if your buyer is looking for marketing automation, well, what are you gonna put in your paragraph right here? Something that has to do with marketing automation. Now you don't wanna do that all over your LinkedIn profile because then you become a keyword stuffer and then Google doesn't like that. But put us strategically in places that Google's gonna crawl your page and say, okay, well, Gabe via Mazar has marketing automation a few times, they have a backlink to this page, therefore, Gabe and marketing automation rank high. In a sense, that's how it works, okay? Moving on. Again, make sure that you put your title. And if your title, so this happened uh, a few weeks, uh, actually when I first joined HireVue, some guy's name, uh, a guy named Seth Weiner, his um, position was marketing coordinator specialist. And I'm like, Seth, are you an inbound or outbound? He's like, I'm, I'm inbound. And I'm like, so you're setting appointments for the closers so they can close the deal, right? He's like, yeah, so you're a customer facing or prospect facing role. And he's like, yes, I am. And I'm like, why does your title look so weak? It's a, it's a again, a customer um, marketing coordinator specialist. I'm like, so when a prospect comes to your LinkedIn profile and they look at that, they might look down upon that title. So have your employees have titles that stand out. And have, have them have titles that really, when people come to, to their LinkedIn profiles, in, in half a second, they're gonna make a judgment. Oh, this person's legit. But if they have an associate or a low title level, they're gonna be like, I just got off the phone with some kid that just told me to, uh, just set an appointment of half an hour to an hour of my time, you know? So make sure you optimize your work title, again, for what you wanna rank for, and so that people perceive you as a legit person. I'm not saying go up and make up titles, that's not the point. But make up a uh, put a title in there that makes sense for your business, that's gonna increase the chances of people that are gonna uh, appoint, uh, held up, do appointment held in your company. Number two, make sure you put the right company. If your company does, is not, doesn't have a LinkedIn company account, they're doing it wrong. Make sure that if you do put the right company, your company logo should appear right here. Again, a resume is freaking boring, it's just text. Well, LinkedIn has enabled us to do media types. So you can upload YouTube videos, Vimeos, slide shares, and they look all fancy like this. And last but not least, make sure you get some recommendations. They display nice in here. So the CEO of InsideSales.com, Dave Elkington, recommended me, so when people scroll down my, my uh, LinkedIn account, they're like, whoa, Gabe must be legit. The CEO of InsideSales.com just said he's a baller. In other words, uh, but uh, you know what I mean. Get, make sure you recommend others to get recommended. It's just the same way as you make friends. You have to step outside your bubble, and then what happens is, then you start making friends. You can't just wait the whole time for people to come to you because nobody's gonna recommend you unless you're amazing and you're always doing good stuff for others, but no one's gonna endorse you unless you step out of your bubble and start recommending other people. Once you do these optimization tips, when you type your name, it took me six months to own every single category on Gabe via Mazar on the front page of Google. Before, there's this one magician in Colombia. So I'm from Venezuela. There's one magician named Gabe via Mazar, or Gabriel. And this magician would always rank higher than me whenever he would do a magic show. So then one time, when I was trying to figure this out about two years ago, um, right before, uh, when I was finding a job at uh, InsideSales.com and also applying in different places, this one recruiter is like, are you, uh, um, what do you like to do for fun? And I'm like, well, you know, I like to dance, I like to play ping pong and racquetball. It's like, do you, buy, do you by any chance like do magic shows on the side? I'm like, no, dude, what are you talking about? Because I Googled you and it says that yeah, you did a magic show over the weekend. And I'm like, dude, I'm gonna kill that Gabe via Mazzari, screwing up my freaking chances of getting a job. So after that, I was freaking mad. And I'm like, I'm gonna pwn this Gabriel via Mazzari in Colombia and I'm gonna show him that I'm the real Gabe. So after that, as you can tell, there's pictures of Gabe that it's not me, but these are all me right here. But after you do that, you should see it in as little as three to six months. Again, I'm not gonna guarantee it's gonna work if your name is Mike Jones. There's a bajillion Mike Jones trying to do the same thing. Maybe not trying to do the same thing, but a few people are savvy enough to, to do the, these type of tricks. 
But um, if your name is unique or somewhat unique, such as Gabe Villamizar, it's not that hard at all. If you have a very common name, try putting your middle name and try to rank for those three names. First name, middle name, and last name. Because the chances of people having the same three names as you are very low, much lower than having the first and last name. Okay? Again, another thing I recommend, follow companies on LinkedIn. Uh, follow influencers on LinkedIn. And follow news. It all somehow connects the dots and it gives you a, a higher social selling index. That's how LinkedIn measures how, well, how good of a social seller you are. Okay? Again, um, one, another trick I did is I start endorsing other people. Next thing you know, I have 99 plus endorsements on certain skills. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail on how this happened, but just endorse two to three people per day, genuinely, and then next thing you know, people are going to start endorsing you. Because what happens when you endorse people, your face is going to come up more in these quadrants. And people by nature, because they're lazy or just because they want to do it, they say endorse all. So your face is going to come up more in these boxes. And that's what I figured out. That's kind of how it works. Uh, but they change their algorithm all the time. Okay? Your profile picture. I'm just going to cruise through this. Don't do this, right? Have a crappy and blurry picture. People don't recognize you, okay? Squeeze proportions. You know, make sure you don't do that. You can't, who the heck is that, right? The guy with some beer cans? Okay, dude, for real. It's like, we know you like to party, but maybe that's what Facebook's for. You can't see the person's face. He loves his guitar, but don't do that. Like, you know, I like ping pong. What if I'm just there swinging my racket, you know? Like, okay, I'm passionate about it, but maybe not very professional. And this is another one of my pet peeves when it's super small. You know, take the time to get a professional photo. Take it with your iPhone or something, or ask somebody to take it with you, and make sure it fits the whole frame. Such as Richard Branson. Very good example of what he does. And uh, these are some of the specs uh, of how you should do it. Okay? Tip number three, inviting people to connect. Jill Rally is huge on this. You can, by, you can optimize the message when you invite people to connect with you. And by default, it says, I like to add you to my professional network. But there's research that's shown, and you're far more likely people to accept your LinkedIn request if you personalize the message, if you do your homework beforehand. Okay? So for example, Tyler, I've heard the great things about Jolt. I'm trying to expand my LinkedIn network and would like to have a professional, professionals with your expertise in my network. People like, you know, stand out from the crowd. Be that purple cow, like Seth Godin says. Stand out, be different. Therefore, what's going to happen is people will remember you and you're going to stand out. Okay, let's talk about, a little bit about Twitter. I only, only have a few minutes left. The art of tweeting. This is friggin' awesome. Like, I'm super passionate about Twitter because not a lot of people have cracked the code in social selling and there's tons and tons of room and potential for this. 311 strategy. You guys should take a picture of this or screenshot it if you're online. This is my secret sauce, specifically here, what I share. I share five tweets per day. Tweet number one is the third party content. It's not about us. It's a hire, we talk about our hire view partners to strengthen that relationship. We can talk about industry news in this industry. We talk about blogs, okay, a blog that's related to the industry. And then we talk about a website. So that's gonna be your tweet number one. And we do the same for tweet number two, and we do the same for tweet number three. Then we start talking about ourselves. Think what happens with social media, people think it's a billboard and it's a sales channel. 100%. They think that, but it's not. Social is strictly social. It's for interactions. It's for relationships. It's for networking. It's not just to sell your product 24-7. If, if you're here because you think that's what you're going to accomplish, that's, you're wrong, right? You have to nurture a relationship. You have to step out there and do things different. And this is what I found the best strategy. So then, then you promote content, either an ebook, so you can capture their information, okay? A webinar, research case study, get content. And then you want to share a little bit about yourself. You know, take a selfie, take a picture of your family, take a picture of Dreamforce, take it out where I'm at, etc. It seems to be working pretty good. By doing this, you're going to get more followers, okay? You're not going to sound like you're just a sales machine. You're, you're a real human being because you're showing your personality and you're talking about your company, but you're talking about other people. It's all about featuring other people so that people then love you back. You have to apply what Ken Kroak says, you know, the give to get strategy. Okay, so and not just text tweets, but you should also do images, do videos, do slide shares and characters. Okay, text is the least, uh, the type of media or the type of tweet that you can least 
uh, least effective that you could probably do out there. Make sure you mix it up and spice it up with a few of these um, uh, type of tweets. Okay? So I grabbed this online. As you can see here, tweets without images have a lower click through rate, have a lower retweet ratio, and a lower favor ratio. So as you can tell, and it makes sense, when you see a tweet in the Twitter feed, they take up so much freaking space, right? And we are visual people. Nobody likes to read. See, I mean, when is the last time you probably read an article from like top to bottom? You can't probably skim through the article, look for the bold stuff, and try to get something and go to the next. We're in this ADD society where there's so much content being created, so much data being created every single day that we just want like the bits and pieces of information, okay? So a picture, let's say, it's worth a thousand words, et cetera. Another thing I recommend is tweet three to five times per day. And on weekends, believe it or not, there's a higher interactivity or the higher engagement ratio than throughout the week. If you think about it, during the weekend, you're just chilling. You're with your family and friends, and you want to see what your friends that, or your coworkers are doing throughout the week, that, that you meet with throughout the week. So it's, there's a lot higher engagement throughout the weekend. Okay? Same thing here. Okay? Another secret sauce is how to tweet. Okay? Article title plus article URL, and I recommend one or two hashtags. No more. Okay? Don't be like those people who say, you know, hashtag sales acceleration technology. And for you to decipher that code, it takes you like 20 seconds, right? You want people to just digest that information within like less than a second or less. For example, this will look like this. Are you turning away good candidates? Want to look for when hiring what to look for when hiring sales reps? Then you put there the link, hashtag number one, hashtag number two. Now before you, and I'll get into hashtags in a second, but that's one example. That's the good example. Now the even better example, again, is with a picture because it takes up a lot of space. You see that? This looks boring. This looks pretty epic. Boring, epic. Article title, article URL, hashtag number one, or and or the author of the article because the author is going to get notified. And what's cool about Twitter notifications is that they're going to get notified to their email, they're going to get notified probably on their smartphone, and any other device that they have. So it's almost to the point better than an email if you think about it. I won't get into that, but um, pretty cool example. I'll get to it real quick. I went to Cold Stone. I stood in line for 30 minutes, right? Yeah, to get an ice cream. I'm going to screw this. I'm going to tweet at them. Had to stand in line for 30 minutes to get a scoop of ice cream. Hashtag suckstone. Hashtag complaint tweet. Next thing you know, right, what happened is they gave me six vouchers for Love It. The Love It size, I loved it. I really did. My point is that people do listen and companies do listen. So make sure your company replies and is actually engaged on Twitter as well. Now, if you start your tweet with an at sign, only people who follow you and follow Coldstone will see that tweet. This is the number one mistake everybody on Twitter does. If you want every single one of your followers to see your message, don't start your tweet with the at, at sign. Let me repeat that one more time. Don't start your tweet with the at sign or the handle if you, don't, if you want to display it to the whole world. Because this right now, only people who follow, only my followers who follow Coldstone, and, my, and, and Coldstone's gonna see this, not everybody. So if I want the whole, if I want my 11,000 followers on Twitter to see that I'm mad at Coldstone, I want to do it somewhere in here. Just n don't start it with the, on the first uh, word. Okay. Um, and last but not least, some some hashtags. Isn't it cool how like the pound sign for some reason got evolved and now it's a hashtag and it's acceptable that way? I mean, when did that become acceptable, right? I mean, who says pound sign these days? If you know, if you use pound sign, that you're, I don't know, whatever, but uh, you're a laggard. That's what it is. But um, it's a hashtag, right? So use the right hashtags to gain followers. If you're not using the hashtag DF14 throughout this conference, you're doing it wrong. It helps you improve your reputation because a lot of people will see what you're talking about, and you can get information that way. So we just had a conference, and the hashtag was View Summit. You should be able to see everything here. And this is the... Another cool trick about Twitter, right now it's only displaying top. Well, I toggled it to all, therefore I'm gonna see every single person that has been tweeting View Summit. Well, Twitter by default just shows you the top tweets about View Summit. 
or the hashtag that you're searching for. Make sure you toggle it to all so you can see everybody that's talking about that, okay? Some hashtag stats, um, effect of the hashtags, but I want to get to this tool uh, real quick. I only have a minute. Take a picture of this too if you want. Uh, these are groundbreaking tools that if you really want to be serious about social selling, I recommend you get all four or at least get two or one. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a must for every social selling individual out there, okay? It's a plugin or it's a, a new, I would say, feature, whatever you want to call it, plugin by Sales Navigate, by, by LinkedIn, and it helps you sell. It organizes the data on LinkedIn into this one tab that it's separate from LinkedIn. So it kind of cleans and clears out the noise. Inside Pool, it's like the best for Twitter drip campaign automation. You can find who to tweet, and then you say, I want to tweet at least 100 people, this message, personalize it, and it does it for you. It works awesome. We just barely got that. Kite Desk, awesome for social selling as well. You can kind of see who can introduce me to who in this organization. And Sales Loft, it's also great for finding emails and things like that. But again, these two top social selling tools, these guys, Sales Loft is just right here. Actually, if you walk out, Kite Desk, you know, talk to Sean Burke. He's the, he's the CEO and founder of Kite Desk. Again, highly recommend the tool. Inside Pool, Adam, founder right there. Talk to him after this. And LinkedIn Sales Navigator, Cocus Sexton, he's like the face and the social selling godfather in LinkedIn. He's here today as well at the LinkedIn booth and here and there. But again, I highly recommend all these. So that's it, guys. I think that's all I had to cover. Thanks. Wexler. So if you want to stay, great. Otherwise, um, we'll give you your drone and away you go.